I've got to start talking to my kids now. I can't wait till they're 16 and say, oh, by the way, I really don't want you to date because you're not ready to get married. Um, so start those conversations early with your kids so that they can get used to your expectations and why those you believe those are wise expectations. Hey, everyone, this is Yvette Hampton. Welcome back to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. I am back today with my friend Davis Carmen. He is the president of Apologia Ministries. If you guys use Apologia curriculum, I know you love it. There are so many homeschool families who use them because they're excellent. It is one of our favorite curriculum. Is it curriculum or curricula? I never know which way to say that. Curricula is. Cur- cur- <laughs> curricula is the plural. Um, a lot of people say curriculums, but. Yeah, I know. I don't know. I, I always feel weird saying curricula. It sounds funny, but but they're one of our favorites. So if you guys haven't tried them out, um, go to Apologia.com. You can find out more about uh, Davis and Apologia both. Davis, welcome back to the podcast. I'm so glad to have you back with us today. We are talking about 10 steps to radically intentional parenting. And we are learning from you and from Rachel and from the things that the Lord has taught you through your 30 plus years of parenting. And I know that he's taught you an awful lot. Um, and you have left such a good legacy for your kids. So thank you for, for doing that. Thank you for teaching us how to do that with our kids as well. Um, so let's talk about nine and 10, but first I want to thank our sponsor, BJU Press Homeschool. Do you want help managing your homeschool day on a day-to-day basis? BJU Press has a new homeschool hub that can dramatically simplify things for you. You'll be able to see your child's workload, document grades, modify schedules, and more. The BJU Press Homeschool Hub is the resource you need for painless planning and happy homeschooling. Visit BJUPressHomeschool.com to see how the hub can change your homeschooling. These ones are, are getting heavier because I know you said as the list goes on, it's kind of chronological and it's getting heavier as our kids are getting older. And uh, so let's let's shoot number nine out. Yes. Yeah, so uh, like I said, we, we've we been going through this list uh in an approximately chronological order as to when you face them. Uh, you know, you've faced the education decision when your kids are young, uh, but then it gets harder as they get into extracurricular activities and have tough conversations about fashion statements. Well, now on number nine, let's talk about TV, movies, phones, games, and the web. I mean, I put them all in one category. So you want to be intentional on this, but there's a wrong way to be intentional. And by intentional, I do not mean that you decide to intentionally buy everyone their own device. <laughs> that would be one way to be intentional. Okay. Sure. We're just getting all of you an iPhone, call it a day, and we'll, you know, sit at the dinner table and look at our screens. Oh. Um, that, that would be one way to do this, but that that's not what we're talking about. Uh, you know that. And the screens, the devices, the, they become a distraction so easily. So there's all kinds of best decisions Rachel and I made here. Um, I want to tell a story about video games first, and then I'll tell you the best decision we made, which was not necessarily on video games specifically. But when my uh, older boys were about 8 and 10 years old, They came home after playing with the neighbor kids and they had one of these things called a Game Boy. This was back in the (laughs) the late 90s. They had a Game Boy in their hand and they said, Dad, the neighbor kids got a brand new Game Boy. They gave us this one. It's still in good condition. We know you you and mom have been very, you know, cautious about video games in in the house, but we promise that we will share this. We will not fight about it. Can we please have it? And I was just like, oh, great. It begins. And as a parent, I just felt like, oh, boy, this is going to be a long journey trying to figure out this parenting gig. So I said, okay, here's the deal. Um, uh, And I kind of came up with this quickly on the spot. Uh, I'll let you play with it for one hour a week. And if there's ever any fighting over this thing, we're taking it away. And they're like, Okay, Dad, absolutely one hour a week. We will not fight. Thank you so much. We're going to be great at this. Um, We're going to use our first hour right now. (laughs) Of course. (laughs) Of course. (laughs) So they go up to the room. They start playing whatever. I'm downstairs. And it's not 15, 20 minutes. I'm hearing screaming, yelling, all kinds of pandemonium going on upstairs in the bedroom. (laughs) So I walk up there. 
I remember standing at the doorway, just looking at them and they couldn't see me. They were practically at each other's throats. And I just stood there, didn't say a word. And then, you know, in a minute or two, they saw that I was standing there. They, we caught eyes, they looked at me and there was this <laughs> moment just frozen in our memory banks where they just looked at me and said, dad, oh my goodness, you were right. And they walked over and handed me this Game Boy, and that was the end of the story. Uh, now, I'll say this, too. Um, I love telling this story partly because I'm a mechanical engineer, so I actually love technology from a historical standpoint, if nothing else. And in our attic, I have what I call my techno technology museum. I have the original <laughs> Macintosh that Rachel and I had. Oh, my. Um, that I have must take up, like, half of your attic. Oh, it, it was one of those. Oh, it does. I mean, in terms of all the things I got, I have um, some cassette tapes, VHS tapes, um, an incandescent light bulb, old technology, uh, and several of the cell phones that I had from the early Motorola. And sitting up there is this Game Boy. And so it's just up there as a reminder of this story. So we... We didn't avoid video games completely. We, as a general rule, we didn't have them. And we let the kids play when they would go to an event, um, a friend's house. Uh, but by and large, because they weren't on them all the time and we basically didn't do them at home for the most part, they, they didn't become an obsession or an addiction for our kids. And uh, so, and it, with boys, you got to be really intentional about that because otherwise for boys as in dad and the kids, it can become an addiction and really take away time from the family and from good production of time. But let me go to the best decision we made on this topic. And that was the house we're in right now, we've been in for uh, almost 20 years. And we intentionally, again, the key word is we're talking about being intentional parenting and radically intentional. We put uh the only TV screen in the basement. So there is no TV screen on the first floor of our house. So if you're going to watch a movie or a sporting event or TV, you have to intentionally go downstairs to watch it. And typically we're going down as a family to say, okay, it's Friday pizza and movie night. What movie do we want to watch? And we all go downstairs and we're watching something together as a group on purpose Nobody's just randomly turning the TV on. It's not just randomly on in the background. And that has created a culture in our household where it, it's conversation first. There's, there's not this distraction with the screen. Now, this doesn't mean we don't have iPhones or laptops or iPads. Sure. We use technology, but because we haven't um, had a, a family lifestyle of video games, and because we haven't had a screen on the first floor, even screen time has been more intentional than I believe it would have been if we hadn't had made some of those decisions. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. Let's take a break. We'll be right back. We want to thank all of our sponsors for making this show possible. BJU Press Homeschool, CTC Math, Apologia, and IEW. Without them, we wouldn't be able to do this. Visit the show notes for links to these great companies and thank them for supporting the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. We are back with Davis and uh, man, it, I tell you, dealing with the technology stuff is so stinking hard. I wish that we could just rewind back to the 90s and 80s when I was a kid and we didn't have all the pressures of technology. You know, it, it just was, life was so much simpler back then. And so it, it's hard though. It's a hard time to navigate through parenting young adults and teenagers and preteens and even, even young kids. Um, so we definitely in that realm have to really ask that the Lord will give us wisdom and help guide us to make good decisions because the decisions that our kids make with technology can be life altering and so damaging for them. And so that's a scary, it's a scary place to be um, as a parent and it doesn't seem to be getting easier. It only seems to be getting harder. So speaking of harder, let's talk about um, number 10, because this is a topic that I think is hard for every every parent to navigate. And uh, this is the topic of dating, courting, and marriage preparation. What did you and Rachel do in regards to, to this with your kids? 
Yes. So, you know, you're now your kids are getting old enough to where they actually could be looking for somebody to marry, interested yeah. in finding somebody to marry, want to start a family of their own. But wow, yeah, the, this that's a big decision. Yeah. So we, there is no formula for this or any of the other stuff. That, that again, is uh, I want to reiterate. Yeah. Uh, we have have three kids that are married right now, and all three of their journeys looked uh, very different from each other. But we had two basic um, principles. Now, the best decision we made was lots of conversation, which is one of those principles. So the two things we told our kids is when you find somebody you're interested in, go slow mm -hmm. and have lots of conversations with us. Yeah. Now, go slow can mean a lot of different things. Um, specifically, you know, don't rush to the altar. You know, let's let's get to know the person. Let's let you get to know the person. Uh, let's spend some time together talking about this. And again, that kind of leads to all those conversations that you want to have leading up to that, because marriage is a big uh, decision. It's a, yeah. a commitment. It's a sacred thing, uh, institution with the God ordained. So you want to take it seriously and you want to make sure you're actually ready to be married. But even those conversations can they can be all over the map. And I wanted to talk about this, the go slow piece. Um, Rachel and I actually uh, believe and would m promote a short engagement because yes. after all those conversations, after you've had time to get to know each other and everybody's on board and supportive and you have blessing from you know the parents, it's like, okay, get engaged and get married um, you know, because then you're, you're ready. You know you found the right person. You got everybody's support at that point. Uh, it can only become difficult if right. you have two Christians who are trying to remain pure and they're passionate about each other. And, you know, why are we why are we waiting for right. a year or two or three for a long engagement? So the go slow part is leading up to the engagement is specifically what, what I'm talking about. Yeah, agreed. I agree completely. What did you do about what, you know, so obviously you've got three who are married. Did you have any situations where any of your kids were interested in someone else who you just were like, you know what, they're all right, but they're not God's best. Like you just knew that was not God's best for them. How did you handle that? Or have you handled that? Yeah, we, we, we did face that where, um, I'll give two examples. One, we, one of the keys here, I would say that is a key is to start the conversation with your kids early. Yeah. So I remember the first time that I heard a presentation much like this, when my oldest was 10 and I realized, oh my goodness, if we're going to go down this kind of a path, I've got to start talking to my kids now. I can't wait till they're 16 and say, oh, by the way, I really don't want you to date because you're not ready to get married. Um, so start those conversations early with your kids so that they can get used to your expectations and why those you believe those are wise expectations. Uh, but even though we did that, our oldest had his eye on this girl and wanted to date this girl when he was in high school. And I, I asked him the question that I told him I would ask him, are you ready to be married? No. Well, then why are you dating? Because I really like her, dad. But are you ready to be married? No. Well, what happens to the, you marry the people you date. So if you're not ready to be married, I don't think you should be dating. So even though I had taught him this for years and he understood it, you know, his heart, his brain fell out because his heart was in, you know, he thought in, in love with this girl. And so uh, we let them spend time together. And then, of course, the question was, Dad, can I hold her hand? Oh, boy. Okay. <laughs> yes, but that's it. Well, then after a little while, Dad, can I put my arm around her? Son, do you see where this is going? <laughs> you know, <laughs> this is going to go down to a place. Well, eventually they went to a, this homeschool prom. And Rachel and I could tell this was going to be a disaster from the beginning. And we told him so. We said, son, this, this is going to be a disaster. And he said, no, no, dad. This, this. Well, so Rachel and I said, you can do this on one condition. Mom and you have to go with another couple. And mom and I are going to drive the van with everybody. We're, we're the chaperones. Mm -hmm. And they said, okay, okay. Well, they go to this event. And after we drop the last person off, and it's just, Rachel and I and him in the car, he says, 
oh boy, you and mom were right. <laughs> this was a disaster. What was I doing? What have I been thinking? So some kids have to learn, I'll say, through the school of hard knocks and through some experience, and that can test your patience as a parent. Yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, again, we had lots of conversations. Yep. We were, so again, it's never going to go exactly according to textbook. Um, sure. Everyone's going to look different. And we had one daughter who uh, was dating somebody. We actually thought it was a pretty good situation at the beginning. And then he kind of fell off the map and dropped the ball in a lot of ways that we realized, wait a second, um, the two of you are dating because you're both um, almost done with your education, meaning college. Mm -hmm. And uh, we think you're good matches. So we had no problem with you dating for the purpose of getting married pretty, you know, in a year or two. But now you're you're not acting like the young man you were six months ago. What gives? Well, then it, it got worse, and we started having to talk to our daughter and saying, "Do you real? Do you see what's happening? He's not your man anymore. He, he obviously isn't into you like you think he is, and she's making excuses because she doesn't want it to end. But Rachel and I can see the writing on the wall, and eventually he was man enough to to break it off. But it still took her a long time to get over that. And But it created opportunities for Rachel and I to have conversations to say, see, this is why you need to have conversations with us, yeah. because when you, quote, fall in love, you don't think right. right. You, you're, not, you're not rational. You're not logical. And, and you need people who love you and know you to help you navigate this when you can't see clearly. And they say, oh, so it, it's good learning experiences. But then the next time, you know, they meet somebody, you know, all, all that happens again. And so it, it's it's never easy yeah. uh, and it's not a formula. And so that's why I think at least two pretty good principles are to encourage your kids to go slow, mm -hmm. get to know this person, take your time there. If you get all the way to the engagement, then go fast. Yeah. But um, have lots and lots and lots of conversations with the people who know you and love you, your mom, yeah. dad, your siblings, grandparents, uh, pastor, people who know and love you and want the best for you. Yeah. It is so exciting to be able to have the time that we have as homeschool parents to build that relationship with our kids. We've talked a lot about this on the podcast and that homeschooling allows us to build a relationship that's a little bit different than it might be if our kids were away from us for most of their childhood. And when you have that relationship with them, they learn to trust you. And when they trust you, hopefully they will heed your advice especially when it comes to dating and marriage and the, cause you know, man, marrying the wrong person can break you as an adult. I mean, it can, it can truly ruin who, who you are um, as a person. And so, you know, we always tell our girls, it's, it's best to wait for, wait for God's best, you know, don't ever settle just because you're desperate to be married. And of course they're not at that point yet, but I, I want them to just know, don't ever settle just because you're desperate. Wait for God's best. It's always, it's always worth it. It's worth waiting for God's best than to marry out of desperation and marry the wrong person. Though I will say, once you marry that person, they become the right person exactly. because you've now committed to a relationship with them. Um, and made a covenant with the Lord for that. That's so, right. so we're just about out of time. What are some last encouraging words you can leave with our audience for this week? Yeah. So one of the things I want to remind everybody is the very first thing we talked about, and that is one of the hardest parts about parenting is that your kids are free agents. Yeah. Uh, they have a free will. So you can do a lot of really good things as a parent. Uh, you can have family worship. You can take them to church. You can memorize scripture. You can spend lots of time with them. You can even homeschool them. And none of that is a guarantee that they'll make right decisions, that they'll be wise. And that's that's sobering as a parent. That can be scary, but it's not a reason to put on blinders, to throw in the towel, or to just say, whatever, this is too hard, I can't do it. I really want to encourage the families that are listening, the moms and dads that are listening, to be intentional, to make the hard decisions, to think through things, uh, be unified as a couple, on all these big decisions, but they're, they are big decisions. And it's not your imagination that there could be some pretty big consequences to how you raise your kids. 
but uh, do your best, rely on God, know that he's sovereign and in, in, in control, but also know your kids are going to make their decisions and your job is to persevere, stick with it, not give up and have lots and lots of conversations because r- relationships can be messy. They can be hard, uh, but boy, the the harvest is coming if you don't give up, if you persevere, if you trust God, a lot of good things can happen. A lot of good fruit can come. And that that can be very rewarding as a parent down the road. Um, but it feels like a long ways away when you're in the trenches. Yeah. So don't give up. Keep at it uh, and be as intentional as you possibly can. Yeah. Wow. Thank you for that. Um, you have been so encouraging this week, Davis. Thank you for sharing uh, just what the Lord has taught you and Rachel in your um journey of parenting. So I am so grateful for you. Thank you for sharing with us. Thank you guys for listening to the podcast this week. We are so blessed by your time. I am so thankful that you take time to listen to this podcast when there are so many others you could be listening to. If this ministry, if the Schoolhouse Rocked ministry is a blessing to you, would you consider a donation to the ministry? It can be a one-time donation. It can be a monthly donation. Whatever the Lord puts on your heart, you can go to Schoolhouse Rocked Dot com, click the donate button and you can learn about all things Schoolhouse Rocked through that website, including a link to the movie. Have a great rest of your week and we'll see you back here on Monday. Have a great day. Bye. The Homegrown Generation Family Expo is back. The Homegrown Generation Family Expo is a live and fully interactive online conference coming March 6th through 9th. Registration is now open at homegrowngeneration.com. It'll be four days of nonstop encouragement and fun that you can enjoy from the comfort of your home. Registration includes lifetime access to every session. Mark your calendars for March 6th through 9th and visit homegrowngeneration.com to register today.